All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to go over membrane potential and the Goldman Katz equation in, in particular. So last video we went over the Nernst equation, right? And what it was is we're calculating the equilibrium potential for one ion. So we're given an ion and we are given the concentrations outside the cell and inside the cell, and we can figure out what the membrane pot uh, the equilibrium potential for that specific ion was. And that equation was um, R, which is the gas constant times temperature in Kelvin divided by valence of the ion times Faraday's constant. Um, and if you want these values, uh, did I listen below? I did not list them below, but they're in the previous video. So I would highly should, uh, suggest you do that, uh, look at that. Times the natural log of the, con the ion concentration outside the cell divided by ion, ion concentration inside the cell. So I also told you that there's a very special circumstance is that when the temperature stated in the question is 37 degrees Celsius, which is human body temperature, we can literally eliminate all this RT over ZF natural log stuff. And all we have to do is just change it to 61 log times the concentration of the ion outside divided by the concentration of the ion inside. And we get the same, we get the correct answer. So now we have the goldman hodgkin katz equation. Okay, or known as the Goldman equation. Uh, here's a little tip. So if you're, if you in the future come up with an equation by yourself, make sure your last name is high in the alphabet, like an A or B or C, because no one calls this the Hodgkin equation, the Katz equation. We all call it the Goldman equation because his, the, his last name is the first letter in the alphabet, you know, compared to Hodgkin and Katz, H and K, right? G is first. So make sure your last name's in the beginning. And if it's not, well, you know, whatever, change it. <laughs> um, so the Goldman equation, what is this saying? Okay, I know it's, a, it's huge, right? Um, but we're gonna, it's, pretty, it's very easy. Um, so what this is, is when you're giving a bunch of ion concentrations in the cell, right? We have potassium, sodium, you have chloride, right? We can take all these ions and their concentrations and figure out resting memory potential of the cell. Basically, where is the cell very comfortable at not doing anything, right? There's no crazy uh, electricity output, you know, no electricity, you know, actual potentials being generated, nothing like that. The cell is at rest. When is the cell at rest, right? And you, how you find that is with these ion concentrations, okay? So what does this say? So it's actually the same thing. So what this VM stands for is resting membrane potential. That's what it stands for. This is called resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential, okay, equals the gas constant, like we just said above, times temperature in Kelvin, divided by his valence, times the Faraday constant, times the natural log of this huge bad boy right here. Okay, so we're going to break this down. Okay, the top line. What is this saying? This is the permeability of potassium multiplied by the concentration of potassium outside of the cell. Okay, the O stands for outside. Plus the permeability of sodium, permeability of sodium times the concentration of sodium outside the cell. Make sure it's outside. Plus the permeability of chloride times the concentration of chloride inside the cell. Okay, this is important. A lot of people mess this up. Okay, it's inside. Why is it inside? Well, do you see how potassium is a positive charge and sodium is a positive charge? Well, chloride has a negative charge and this changes everything, right? That's a, I should box that in actually. Um, negative charge, this changes things. So what we do is we flip it in the equation. Chloride now, it's basically the potassiums are the outside, sodiums on the outside, but now when you get the chloride, we flop it and now it's the permeability of chloride, that doesn't change, times the chloride concentration of inside the cell. We're gonna do an example, so it'll make so much more sense when we do it. Uh, but yeah, okay, so then divided by, so it's the same deal here, the permeability of potassium 
times the uh, concentration of potassium inside the cell. Okay, so these numbers are the same. These numbers are the same. So is this. So is this. Okay, T plus the uh, permeability of sodium times the sodium concentration inside the cell. Right. Uh, let me make this blue. Sorry. Let me make this blue. Okay, plus the permeability of chloride. Um, let me just change the colors a little bit here to make it a little easier. Okay, plus the permeability of chloride times the chloride concentration on the outside, right? Not the inside, but the outside because of the negative sign. Okay, and we can use the same exact trick with 37 degrees Celsius human body temperature. If the question states, right, um, 37 degrees Celsius, we can use 61 times the log of the all the you know the equation above, right? Um, and yeah, okay. Example: Calculate resting mem membrane potential given the following permeability permeabilities and ion concentrations. Um, I also is going to put just for the sake of simplicity, the temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. I'll do a more complicated one after, um, probably in the next video when the temperature is not 37 degrees. But on a test, I mean, your professor would be really cruel to not put 37 degrees Celsius because who wants to remember the gas constant, Faraday's constant, right? Come on, that's just it's a waste of time, right? Come on, what, what are we doing here, right? So, uh, so let's do it. Okay, so first off, um, resting membrane potential equals 61 log, right? 61 log because we're at 37 degrees Celsius and I stated right here, right? For 37 degrees Celsius, you just use 61 log times, okay? Here's the meat and potatoes right here. Okay, so we're doing potassium, permeability of potassium. Right, that's the first thing we do. So we look over here, and this this will this these numbers will all be given to you on the test or one, or whatever exam whatever quiz you do you do all of this will be provided. He has to provide this, or he he or she has to provide this to for you to actually solve it. All right, so we got permeability of potassium. It's one, right? So we do one, one times the. Per, uh, the concentration of potassium outside. Okay, according to a little schematic here, let me box this in so it's like better. Okay, so we got potassium on the outside, right, right here. Okay, so that's twenty. Put this in brackets. Plus, now we got sodium up, right? Now, according to the equation. Uh, permeability of sodium ions. So you look at over here. Oh, we got the permeability right here, right? This in a different color here. Okay, permeability of sodium is 0 0.04. I know I'm going a little bit slow here. I just want to make sure you get this because um, you know this is a difficult concept. Okay, times the sodium concentration on the outside. All right. So let's look at that. Da, 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 da. Oh, here it is, 440. 440, okay. Times 440. Plus. And by the way, we've, on the test, if they ask you how to show your work, this is how you're going to do it. You can put the units of millimoles, but uh, it's fine. I'm, I want to run out of space. Uh, now, the permeability of chloride. Next up, 0 0.045, 0 0.45, yeah, times, now, it's not, remember, it's not the concentration on the outside, it's the inside because of the negative sign, right? So, what color do I use? Okay. On the inside, 52. Bam. Okay. Now, that's the top. Now I have to do the bottom. 
So it's the same thing, permeability of potassium. We all, that's already the same thing on, you know, on top. We already did that, so that's one. Times the, co the uh, concentration of potassium in the inside the cell. So we got right here, ta -da, 400. 400 plus permeability of uh, sodium. Well, that's 0 0.04 as stated above. That doesn't change. Um, and sodium concentration inside the cell. So we got, oh, there it is. Box that in. 50. Plus chloride con uh, permeability, which is 0 0.045, 0, I can't make the same mistake, 0 0.45 as stated above, and the concentration of chloride on the outside. 560. Okay. Yes, this does involve math, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully you've been to the fourth grade and you can do this. It's... <laughs> Um, all right, so let's add this up. So let's break it down so you don't make any mistakes. That's 20. 0 0.04 times 440 is 17.6. 0 0.45, 0, oh, yeah, 0 0.45, I did, I said it right. Okay, times 52 is <laughs> 23.4. Let me make sure from the calculator that makes that actually makes sense. I think it does. 23.4? Yeah, okay. 400 times one. Well, I hope you get that one right. Um, <laughs> 0 0.04 times 50 would be two. Plus uh, 0 0.45 times 560 is 252? 252. 0.45 times 50. Let me check on the calculator. 252. Yeah, okay. So then this would technically equal uh, uh, 60. So that's 61 over 654. I'm just, I just add at the top add, and I add at the bottom. So now we write VM equals 61 log. That stays times. 61 over 6, 61 over 654. So that should equal negative uh, 62.84 millivolts. Let me make sure I'm not calculating here. 61 divided by 654. Negative 62.84, okay, okay, that's fine. Or 85, whatever, if you round. And this is the resting membrane potential of the cell given these concentrations on the left and the permeabilities. So this is a very common test question that you're be, you'll be given all these values. There's no way, I mean, okay, you're, I don't think your professor will be that cruel that they're gonna say, find what the ion concentration of potassium on the outside is given the resting membrane potential and all the other numbers. This is not an algebra class. This is physiology, right? So <laughs> there's no way your professor can ask that. Um, if you do, if, if, if your professor happens to be a really mean person, then just get to do some algebra to figure, figure it out. But almost, I want to tell you like 99.99% of the time, it's going to be this question. Find the resting membrane potential given all this info. And the hardest part of this is actually inputting the info correctly, right? And not messing up and actually adding it correctly. Um, so that's why I wrote it like this, right? Add, add the number, do the numbers one by one and then add them together. Because a lot of people just input this all in their calculator and they get the wrong answer. And it throws everything off and you know, there you go. You get points off your test. Um, so this is the memory potential in Goldman Katz equation. Um, so hopefully this was helpful and I will catch you in the next video and please like and subscribe, you know um, Okay, I should probably say in the beginning of the video, but I kind of want subscribers um, So if you can help me out with that, that'd be great <laughs> I'm just starting out my YouTube channel I plan to do this for a very long time and I want to cover all these subjects right physiology biology chemistry physics Organic chemistry. I'll probably do all of it, right? 
Um, I'm just starting out with physiology because I love physiology. It's like my life. Anyways, later.